Hello, my friends. John Rufy here with another Rules Speed Through. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to play Black Forest. And I'm going to teach you how to play it solo. And hopefully, this will help you get things going if you've learned it before and just need to refresh on the rules, or if you've read the rules and you're just you need to know how the game flows. So let's get started. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, I really do appreciate that support. Thank you very much. So let me tell you first about kind of an overview of the game. You're going to play the solo game in five rounds, okay? And in each of the five rounds, you are going to place each of these five worker pawns. And you're going to place them on the board, either in one of these intersection spots in a town, or you're going to travel to one of these jobs and do the action there. Okay, that is what you're going to do basically to use the board. And whenever you do that, you'll take either one or both of the actions, <clears throat> excuse me, next to the place you place your worker. So if I was to place my worker right here, I would get my choice of either this action, that action, or both actions if I wanted to. All right. The other thing is, is if you place it on a job, then you basically will spend whatever those resources are to get whatever these resources are. You'll discard the job and then you will draw a new one from the stack. And the way that the whole thing works is when you go from one, after you've placed your first worker down, you can place another one in the same town for free. But if you want to move to a new town, you have to pay the difference in provisions like this. So if I want to go from here to here in my next turn, I'd have to pay the provision cost of one. I could skip this town completely and go all the way over here. Then I just have to pay the provision cost of two. And the same thing is if I wanted to like go around and get a job, go to a job, I have to pay the difference in all the costs as they go through. Now, if you decide to double back on a town where there's already people, let's say I went here, then here, then I need to go back here, I'd have to pay the provision cost, plus I'd have to pay one basic resource of my choice, and the basic resources are any of the resources in the wider areas of your production wheel that I want. Just pay it down per pawn that's in that town. The exception is if I use my white pawn, I don't have to pay that basic resource. I always have to pay the provisions going from town to town, though. All right? If I want to accomplish a job that's inside a town, I just simply have to place on any of the spots and do that job instead of these two actions. And that is how each of the that, that is like the whole crux of the game as far as moving around and doing things, okay? Now, in all of these cards, there's a couple of different things you can see here. There's an either or situation where you take that or you get to build a building. There's some of these situations that are red where if I spend one of these, in this case, charcoal, I would get four bricks. And then there's some of these things where it's like per a certain number of, in this case, ponds that I have built already on my board, I would get that amount of resources. And those are the basic three types of things that you see here, plus just a simple get a, you know, get a farm animal, all right? You do this in five rounds. So you're going to do five placements, and you're going to move the round marker, do five more placements, do the round marker, five more placements, do the round marker. When you go to the fourth round, you're going to pick up each of these town tiles, shuffle them all together, and then place them out randomly on board based on their backs again, kind of redoing the board basically. And you always remove all of your pawns between rounds. Now, besides this, those actions, that is exact. That is basically how you take play the game. Now, what do you do on your turn? On your turn, the first thing you could do is spend a commodity, which is this resource right here, if you have any. And when you spend anything in this game, you will slide it from the upper parts of your wheel down to where, you know, the lower number, okay? Each of these wheels has numbers on them as that you can see here and if i want to spend something i want to go let's say i want to spend that that commodity like i said i'll take it from the one slot and move it to the zero slot okay when i do that that is something i do before i move my guy and i am able to take this traveling merchant and swap it with any position on the board it doesn't matter where my guys are i don't even have to use the things it just means I get to swap. That's the first thing you do, and that's optional. Then, I, like I said, you do your movement. And then you do your action where you visit one or two adjacent tradespeople, or you complete a job. Now, if you cannot afford to take a legal move, or you don't want to and you want to go across, but you don't have any provisions left, 
you can, let's say I was here and I have no provisions like I do right now, zero. I can discard one of my pawns, set them aside, and gain one provision. All right, and that's called begging, okay? And that's basically what you do if you don't have a way to get any of these and there's no other way to do it. Okay, so those are the three <clears throat> steps that you're going to take, and you're going to do that, you know, each time you take, um, you go through your turn. Now, how do you do other things in this game? Well, let's talk about the wheels. So the wheels work like this. If at any point in the game you have this spot clear where it says the zero and this spot clear where it says the three, the two dark spots, the wheel will immediately turn and it will produce these better goods and consume one basic good each just by turning this wheel. So notice this, okay? Here, I have zero, zero, and one. And I have one, one, and five. If I turn this, when I turn the wheel, because that those spots are empty, now I have one, one, and two, zero, zero, and four. So it consumes everything over here and adds to one everything over here. The exact same thing is true for this wheel over here. And that is the only way that you're going to be producing glass and provisions and commodities unless you do so in such a way with these buildings, which you can do. For instance, there are buildings like this one where I can spend a food and, uh, or some meat and some porridge to make one glass. And when you do that, you simply reduce the amount of those on your wheel and you add to the amount of the other ones, all right? Now, the movement of this wheel is not optional. As soon as, no matter what, you have, let's say I had this situation, as soon as I move this up, it immediately consumes right away, okay? Same thing with this. As soon as I move this up, it immediately consumes. The brick is not... It is the, an independent resource that does not have anything to do with the wheels, but you still max out. You can never have less than zero bricks and never more than seven, okay? But the brick is independent. Now, when you build a building in this game, you must, and to build a building, you will take this action here, that action there, um, or that action there. You must pay the costs of the resources that are shown on the left, and then you place the building in an open spot on your farm board. And the open spots are these spots right here. And once you place the building, you immediately have access to the benefits. There are four types of buildings in this game. There's the blue ones. In the blue ones, you will convert these to those anytime you want and as much as you want. There are the beige or brown ones where you, once you place it, you immediately do what it says. So in this case, the feeding farm, as soon as I build it, for every one of these grain fields I have, I would get either a pig or a cattle. There are these types, which are permanent buildings at the, at, for the, I'm sorry, permanent upgrades for you. So this means that every time something happens, you would get to do this. This is an easier one to see here. Whenever you visit, the herbalist I think is what that is, you always get a charcoal. And those just happen whenever that happens. And then finally, there's these um, yellow ones, which are end game scoring, which will trigger at the end to give you some kind of points. The same goes for these large buildings, except the large buildings cost more and they take up two spaces. So as you can see here, I'd build it like that and it would take up two spaces. And that is how the buildings work in this game. Now, there's also an animal husbandry um, side of this where you can build stables in this game. And when you get stables, they can hold either three pigs or three cattle, but not a mixture. It's one or the other. And you'll get one point for each of those at the end of the game as long as they're in the stable. You can move your cattle and your pigs to any legal space throughout the board at any time during your turn. These forests can hold one pig. These areas over here can hold two cattle. And so you're obviously going to want to be moving them around to make sure that they will score points at the end. But that's really the only time it matters at the very end. The other thing is, is that you have this glass workshop over here, which will have a glass token on it. And every time you take this action here or that action there, you're going to move the token up. And when the token finally moves to this last space over here, you will take one of these tiles and add it to the side of your board and you'll put two forests on it and you'll put this over here, ex uh, effectively extending your farm. 
okay? And it will start over here, but as you could see here at the end of the game, which I finished, it uh, comes out, you know, it was I was out at that spot. And that is really it. So you're going to play in five rounds, five actions, or five turns per round, and then you're going to try to get the highest score possible. And the scores that you can shoot for are listed in the back of the book. And there are, I think the, the highest score is like 70 or above is the highest tier. The lowest tier, I think, is 20. Yeah, so right there on the scoring. I've really covered, I think, just about everything that was um, involved in this game from a solo standpoint. If I missed anything, please feel free to comment. But that's it. Very simple in some ways, but lots of cool complexities with all these buildings and everything that you can do with them in others. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Whatever you do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.